Yes, hi everybody. Uh, this is uh, Mandy Show. Uh, she will deliver in today's uh, pressing masterclass. We have been having quite fun in the backstage uh, conversation. I will tell you guys uh, in a moment why. Uh, so Mandy, it's, uh, it's a pretty expert, certified pretty, and an excellent professional when it comes to to helping uh, companies, professionals, and speakers. Uh, to 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 develop their journey when it comes to to their own uh, ability to 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 tell their story uh, when it comes to content and design and the li- and delivery um, and providing coaching by actual professional speakers because you don't do that right, uh, Mandy. Uh, ba- only based on content and design, and my partners are coaching on delivery. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, Jeff, so uh, you all have an idea of the level of commitment by Mandy about about all these. She just told me that uh, she and uh, her team, they bought an auditorium, a very old building that they transformed and modernized. So, uh, so the people you work with uh, can actually experiment uh, a real stage when getting coaching and training by you uh, and your team. I mean, that's freaking amazing. You bought an auditorium. Please tell me the story. Yeah, this is some um, building that we, um, um, we used to live. And in this building, it's an old auditorium of the 50s. And there was, um, it was for the, the, the board actually, and the board was inviting uh, education, so institute, institutions as well. And they did some college there, um, some presentations and some lessons. And um, this is empty for the last 15 years. Um, yeah, and I fell in love. Uh, and I thought, how cool would it be if a presentation boutique studio is actually situated or located in an auditorium which brings it all together because you can have your presentation and your practice and um on stage so we call it the hidden stage uh because it's not uh, discovered yet um so um this year we will be renovating and uh, my target is um, to get this um launched uh, by the end of the year that's again freaking amazing congratulations mandy Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 still trying to <laughs> to 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 build all the picture of the auditorium. You guys work in an auditorium in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So we have our real office amazing. actually there, and we can do the coaching sessions, and also you can practice your presentation on stage, and we can take a look at the stage. Yeah, and watch soccer it's... play soccer plays in the weekend. <laughs> 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 you bought an auditorium. Congratulations. Great, great, great adventure. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> so, um, uh, Mandy uh, gently, kindly agreed to teach us about Metaphor uh, with a masterclass session that we are going to call, of course, the magic of uh, the metaphor and how to apply visual metaphor. Uh, in our presentations. Um, I think this is also valid, not only in presentations, but generally speaking, when we have to tell a story, right? Definitely, yeah. It's always interesting to get the um, presentations to their next level. And we try, uh, that is how how we've been taught, is visualizing content in a way that usually what we see in businesses, of course, there are exceptions, but what we see is usually bullet points. And also we have, we call it um, a visual and uh, a text together. And sometimes they're just not even linked to each other or it's literally the, uh, for example, if we're talking about, uh, I don't know, a banana and there's a banana on the slide, we know what a banana is. So do you really need that slide, for example? So what makes right. your presentation even better is thinking about how can you get this message in a way that's a visual metaphor. It's always guiding your audience in a way. So this is what I would like to talk about today uh, because I'm passionate about creating those metaphors. And um, uh, it's 
you have, of course, metaphors in words, in sayings, uh, in every language. And um, right. you have them in visuals and you can combine those, which is make, makes it even more effective. So I just want to get through that. Um, yes, yeah, please go ahead. So first of all, um, what is a metaphor? Um, why should we use it? And how can you use it? Um, those are some three things uh, I'm just going. And if you don't have any questions or Pablo, just interrupt me if you have a question on certain things. It makes I it will. more active. Thank you. So um, what is a metaphor? There are different, like I just mentioned, metaphors in saying and in visuals. We go into focus. It's a big, big topic to talk about, uh, also in science. So let's focus today on visual metaphors, not on the, in, in, in language. So metaphors are an intuitive pattern of thoughts. So um, it is really interesting. It is, uh, if you just mentioned in terms of stories, it is really interesting if you're talking about journeys, for example, to visualize a journey. Um, so it's, it's, it's intuitive. And um, just to give you an example of what I mean by that, it's, it makes complex things uh, easier. So um, for example, uh, in a lot of languages, um, future is in front of us and past is back. This is, a, you combine now, for example, um, visual and the way of you saying it, which is just give you some examples of what, do, what, do, what does she mean by visual metaphors? Knowing is bright and unknowing is dark. Right. Metaphors are also intuitive patterns for design. Uh, and that's what I like to, to teach you a bit more about. Uh, for example, a tap with water. If you push it up, the water is coming out strongly. If you put it down, yeah. it's, cl it's closing the water, right? And that's what we see right. in visuals as well. Um, for example, in graphs, things which are going up, uh, we visualize, of course, a graph going up. So it's already intuitive way um, and also applying that in products and in your visuals. The same um, is the temperature meter going up, going down. So just if you're trying to visualize uh, elements, data or whatever, think about the already things that are intuitive to you. And that's usually quite logical for the majority of the uh, cultures. Of course, you have to consider right. your culture. Because in Arabic, for example, things uh, yeah, are written differently, of course, and in Chinese as well. So right. it could be different because it's left and right, and we have uh, left to right. So you have to think about it as well. Consider your audience if creating these visual metaphors. Um, a question to the audience is um, um, sometimes could be um, really complicated. What does she mean by visual metaphors? I have some examples here and just think about it for a minute. Um, if you see those three examples, which of those three are a visual metaphor? Are you asking me? No, because I, I don't want you to get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give the answer, which is three. So why is that? Right. So the first one is just a soccer uh, field um, with literally circles on it. Right. The second one is a graph and the background is a world, mm -hmm. not really linked. But the last one is also, it's the, um, the top of a picture of the soccer field, where you have a goal, where you have uh, rules, where you have players. So you can use this metaphor to talk about your team strategy, for example, um, because there are goals, there are players, and you can use that metaphor to elaborate on a certain topic and take your audience with you on this trip. This is usually a metaphor that most people know uh, because there are in management, for example, there are a lot of models which are using the tip of the iceberg and below the surface. So by using images in your presentations like this, and you take them on a journey and using those visual metaphors, you help your audience to remember your um, content better. 
And that's the whole goal of giving a presentation is making sure that people know what you have been talking about or influence people, for example. Or so they get the message. Sorry, they get the message. I mean, you're preparing your presentation it takes already a long time. So then you have to make sure that it sticks, of course. And metaphors can be used in your presentation to, to help them remember it better. And also, of course, visuals, that's quite cliche, but everybody knows visualization helps to remember better and to get complex matter in a more uh, easier way. Um, so metaphors could be used as well to make sure that maybe complex elements in terms of could be a strategy or change or whatever, mm -hmm. um, use a metaphor to make it lighter, easier to follow and to make it memorable. So just again, right. to an example of the, the a presentation. So what you see is the tip of the iceberg, which is the presentation performance. But what you don't see is something which is below the surface, which is dedication in hours, practicing, presentation design, of course, trying to understand your audience, but also positive things like excitement. It could be also disappointment and also being afraid. I mean, a lot of people are afraid to present. We just talked about professional speaking and I said, no, I, I'm, I'm fine not being the professional speaker. Not doing that. No, <laughs> I'm fine with creating presentation and supporting, being the backstage and helping people. It doesn't mean that I cannot teach and, you know, sharing my knowledge because that's what I do like. Uh, I just not, don't really like to be professional speaker and being on stage paid for the, all. We are we are even more grateful to you for doing this professional speakers are paid quite largely it could be i don't know from three three thousand euros and some speakers do get fifteen thousand euros and even more than that um and people are having a challenge understanding why people charge what they charge um and then you can actually this is the metaphor because what you see is not what is created of course it is years of training, um, uh, research on content, um, also um, practicing. You have so much more to a presentation than what you only see. And that's a really good metaphor to take people, okay, so below the surface, there's really a lot mm -hmm. of going on in presentation world. So another fun thing, just to have a link to my next visual is, You've seen before that we're saying futures front, past is back, but same as this, dangerous mm -hmm. things are rough. Uh, if you're looking to nature, for example, you see things are rough and safe is smooth usually. So you can play with intuitive right. patterns. Um, it, I'm, I just would like to challenge you to think about it because it's just so much more than creating a slide with bullets. You just really have to think how, how can I make sure that smart visuals are integrated in my presentations. Um, another metaphor is to navigate to stormy weathers. And this is of course the tip of the iceberg, which you just saw and the stormy weather, you see a sailing boat here. Um, so right. a vision yeah. like this uh, is triggering um, the audience to use things. So, and the fun thing about Prezi is that you can take people with you on a journey so let's go into this mind of the um, this man because the most important thing to creating a presentation is make it memorable. So mm -hmm. metaphors do help you to make things memorable because it's a visual journey that you're taking people with you. Um, so what are the um, tips and tricks for an effective visual metaphor? Prezi is a great example of a, a presentation tool that helps you um, to get your story in a visual way. So if you open Prezi, you can see uh, visual metaphors that you can use and actually edit them. So what you see here is the example that I've uh, showed before is also an iceberg uh, with uh, things that are below the surface and above the surface. The other one is- uh, for, for, for the students, 
uh, I don't know if all these ones that you are going to show, uh, but uh, for our students, those are some plates that you can find uh, in, inside a Prezi tool when you are uh, trying to make a new presentation. You can yes. choose any of those templates. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Prezi is actually uh, are quite good in um, providing great templates and you have several metaphors in, in certain themes. So it could be marketing, uh, could be strategy, could be, um, I don't know, education. Um, and you see those uh, visual metaphors uh, in between. I just wanted to make sure that you see the difference between which is a visual with circles and which is actually a visual metaphor where you can take people on a journey. Um, so tip of the iceberg is one. The other one is uh, is this one. It's, it's also a visual metaphor. This is about business review. What you see is also a Prezi uh, template that you can use. And the other one, which is quite obvious, is using mountains. And uh, mountains is climbing and uh, a goal and effort. Up and on one. Something Up like and that. onwards, definitely. And um, this is, uh, so it's now, it's the goal. So, and you can just, you know, if, if you have this image in front of you, you can just play with it. If you try to communicate a strategy, for example. So this is an example. Um, just to um, go into the uh, tips and tricks on uh, what you need to consider if you try to do this, um, because sometimes you can have a really bad move using them. Um, and I want to make sure that you use them in the right way. So uh, keep it simple. So metaphors are there to clear up concepts. If it takes you too long, uh, a long time to explain the connection between two concept, use another comparison. Make sure right. you, keep, you keep it easy. The other one is be original. A cliche is always a metaphor, but a cliche doesn't always have to be a cliche. Nobody wants to hear you tell the metaphor that we heard a hundred times. For example, out of the box, that could be a really cliche. So do we really want to have the box and things in it and out? Okay, I'm trying to challenge you not to use the cliches. Try to be more original right. and try to challenge you and think about a bit longer than- uh, I, guess, I guess the reason for that is about engaging the mind like those metaphors that we know and again and again and again uh we cannot use them to engage to actively engage an audience because they are used to that they know that so either you are not engaging and they are probably disengaging from you and sometimes even the rest of the of the narrative of the message yeah right the cliches are quite a challenge because that's something that you come up with quite easily, right? Um, but again, what you're mentioning, engaging the audience is by you being original in the things that you're showing because you are saying, okay, I, you know, the metaphor is to use um, to make things uh, which are complex easy. So if you're using quite cliches, it's a bit too easy, right? Um, and then it could be patronizing for your audience sometimes. So right. make sure that- Be creative. Think, make be an creative. effort and be creative. Yeah, yeah. And think about, think uh, <laughs> out of the box. <laughs> 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 okay, so be original is one. Um, relevance. So be relevant. Um, you, um, when you use a metaphor and two concepts have to be linked to one another in some ways, it feels like an aha, aha mo moment. So I just mentioned right. that, right? It has to be, ah, that's what you meant. Oh, for example, uh, just to come back to the example of the soccer. So you have players, which are people of your team, for example, uh, and playing by the rules. So what are those rules, you know, and what are the lines? And uh, you can play with that uh, using that metaphor to make it more lightly sometimes as well uh, and, and not mentioning you know these are the rules of our new team for example or our new um, uh, culture for example is reaching a conclusion 
uh, a valid example of uh, a aha moment? Could be, yeah. An aha moment could be also if you zoom out, for example, if we use Prezi and you see the whole thing, for example, if you ha have those tip of the iceberg and you don't see the, uh, the big picture yet and you have all those, mm -hmm. I don't know, water elements, I don't know, so right, something right. like that. And then you zoom out and you see the whole perspective and you think, ah, that's what right. she actually talks about all the time. Yeah, so that could be really effective uh, in, by the end of the presentation, yes. The other one is important. Not everything you share needs in comparison. Think about it strategically, all about using a metaphor, especially use metaphors when you want to emphasize on a concept. So. The other one is emotions. The emotions are actually um, not only in terms of metaphors, but it's in general to be memorized, memorized to be memorable for your audience. It's important to consider what do you want them to get away with. So if they if they leaving the room uh, or they leaving their seats actually uh, nowadays, um, what do you want them to remember? And usually emotions really help and metaphors help to get that emotions um, a bit deeper. So you want your audience to remember your message, you use sensory experience in metaphors, such as sight, feeling, sense, taste of hearing. The audience will feel emotions and therefore being concerned with the story and remember it. This one is really important. Consider to what extent the knowledge of your target audience matches with your metaphor you're using. Make sure your metaphor or will be uh, not be the complex for your audience. Uh, it has to be effective. Just to give you an example, if you're talking to, um, just take the example of the soccer, uh, uh, soccer field. If you're talking mm -hmm. to nurses, um, right. so your whole group is nurses, for example. Um, think about it. Are they really um, know everything about soccer? And is that the right metaphor to use for this audience? Uh, right. So you have to consider your audience. Um, and also just a tip based on my own experience, what I have done wrong in the past. If you have, a, for example, an industry that you're going to talk to for, um, make sure you're not using an example from their industry because you get so much resistance usually. So if you're talking about I don't know, hospitality, for example, and you're talking about the journey in a hotel or whatever, just get another metaphor, not using the industry related things. Because if you have a mismatch on the things that you're saying, the only thing that they feel is resistance on the things that you wanna get across. Just based right. on my own experience, because they know more than you, and and they yes. don't, and they know exactly. Yeah. So don't try. Don't try to do that. Just use something which is really out of their industry, that usually helps. So talking about healthcare, and you have you talk to surgeons, and you have the surgeon room for as a metaphor. Don't do it. Don't do it. It will be wrong. <laughs> So that's the, the target audience is the most important to, to, of course, usually to start with who am I talking to and what message do I want to get across. So those are the biggest tips. And we just talked about a big reveal and things which are really fun to you. It's things like this. Wow. Yeah. So um, and the other that's one amazing. Cool. So this is uh, 2020 in January and this is now. <laughs> 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 I hope that you guys um, um, take this challenge and get your creativity uh, on and try to, to get those visual metaphors and take a look at the um, website of Prezi as well where, where they can help and um, also uh, we have I think we have a blog on visual metaphors as well on our website so um, uh, just take a look we are all very grateful for you taking the time uh, to teaching us about metaphor, visual metaphor, and all the tips and tricks that you share with us are priceless. And at least 
at least me, at least I, I will make great use of them. Great, thank you, Pablo, for this invitation. I appreciate it. Mandy, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for, for giving us this masterclass. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much, okay. Pablo. I really like to uh, thank to you, Mandy. It.